Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you have a garden like we have here, or maybe you have some raised beds with fruits, vegetables, or flowers, or perhaps you have plants in containers, then you know how much they love the rain. When someone gifted my husband a couple of these plastic barrels, we knew exactly what we wanted to do with them, and that was to create our own rain barrels. Not only are they going to be functional, but they're going to be pretty with the help of today's sponsor, Cricut. These two barrels came with lids and a metal ring that snaps the lid together with the barrel. You can find some of these on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, or the Container Exchange. Just make sure that whatever you get, it's food grade or you at least know what was stored in it previously so there are no chemical residue left over in the container. I used a Dawn Power Wash and a scrub brush to thoroughly clean each one of these pieces inside and out to make sure that any debris or any kind of residue that was left on there has been removed. I rinsed them off thoroughly and because it was a nice hot day, I left them out in the sun to dry for several hours. Once they were dry, I'm going to use Krylon's Paint and Primer in One in the color Matte Vintage Gray and spray paint one thin coat on both of the barrels. While that is drying, I'm going to take Krylon's Satin Clear Spray to give those metal rings several coats. I'm not sure exactly what the metal rings are made of, so I wanna make sure that they're not going to rust being outdoors in the weather. I applied a thin coat, let it set for about 10 minutes, applied the second coat, and so on, until I had three coats of the clear on the metal ring, and it only took two coats on each barrel. Now, I let my barrels dry for several days as I was working on other projects. Now I measured four inches from the bottom, and I'm using one of these Rain Pal Rain Barrel Spigots. You can find these in my Amazon store, which is linked in my description box below. They have several different kinds of spigots that you can purchase through Amazon. And I'm using safety glasses, of course, and a 7 8 inch drill bit, which I also have listed in my Amazon store. I drilled the hole for the spigot. Now I'm using a metal file to make sure everything is nice and smooth. The spigot has a nut on the end with a seal, like a rubber seal. Then you leave the other rubber seal on the spigot itself. So you can just insert the spigot into your hole and then take your rubber seal and your nut and reach down into the barrel to screw that on. Now you will need someone else to help you to tighten it up because it's very difficult to try to hold the spigot and tighten it up at the same time. So I had to have my husband help me do that. And one of us just held the spigot while the other one tightened the nut on the inside. So it should be looking something like this. Now for the lid itself, I have clamped this down to a piece of wood so that it will stay sturdy. And I am using a six and three eighths inch hole saw that my husband already had in the shop. This is what you would use to cut can lights. I also have that listed in my Amazon store in my description box below if you're interested in one of those. You attach it to your drill and then I'm gonna drill a hole in the top of the lid. This is so that I can add my rain barrel under a gutter, and this is gonna be where all the water can flow freely down into the barrel. This was super easy. It made the perfect circle. So thank you, husband, for having such wonderful tools available for me to use. Now I am using the metal file to go through and make sure all of the sharp edges are removed and it is nice and smooth so you don't cut your hand on it. In order to keep leaves or debris from falling down into the rain barrel, I'm using an old window screen and I've just laid the lid directly on top of it and I am using a utility knife to go around that and cut the screen out. Then, so that water will freely go through the screen, I'm just gonna take a drill and drill through the screen quite a few holes. So that way, as the water goes through, it doesn't get trapped right on the screen. It will freely flow through those holes 
but keep the leaves and some of the larger bugs out of the rain barrel. Because I use the outside of the lid, it's gonna have an overlap for my barrel, so as I place that on top, I can push my lid down and it will hold it in place. Then I can add the metal ring around it and snap that closed. So it's gonna look something like this. So you can certainly use it just as it is, but let's make it pretty by using the Cricut. So I went over to Design Space and started a new project. I selected images and Design Space has thousands of images that you can use. I typed in flower border and it pulled up thousands of results. So to narrow that down a little bit, I went over to materials and selected vinyl. And then I scrolled through until I found a design that I liked. In this case, it was this beautiful sunflower with a space in between so I could add some text. I went ahead and added that to my canvas. And I'm going to go ahead and select one solid color because I'm not going to be using multiple colors on this project. Then I can go over and ungroup it because there's this one leaf that I don't really want on there. So you can select contour and when it pulls that up, you can click on that part of the design and it will remove it for you. Just make sure to go back and highlight it and regroup it back together so everything will stay the same. Then I can resize it to the size that I want and in this case, you can pull that bottom arrow to get it, it'll move the whole size at one time, or you can hit the unlock button and you can make it taller or wider. I ended up going with a little over nine inches wide and nine inches tall. Now I want to add some text in the middle, so I'll select text and I typed out the word water and then I'll go up here and change my font on the top left of the screen. I chose the font Georgia, and then I'll resize that using the arrow at the bottom right so that I can put that in between the flower border. Once I have that in the position that I want it to be in, I went ahead and changed it to black. You don't have to do that. Then I'm gonna go over to Images and I'm going to type in watering can silhouette because I want to add a watering can to the right hand side of the word water. Then I'll scroll through until I find a design that I like. In this case, when I click on this one, it's going to put it at the bottom of the screen. And then I can continue to scroll through and see if there's any other watering cans that I like better. If I don't find one, then I'll just go ahead and hit Add to Canvas, and it's going to pull that up. So I just want the watering can itself. I do not want the flowers. So I am going to highlight it, ungroup it, and then I can click on each one of those flowers and leaves and delete those. Now I can resize my watering can to make it fit on the right-hand side of my text. I want it to go in the opposite direction so you can go to the top of the screen where it says flip and I'm going to flip this horizontally. I want to add a few raindrops or water drops. So once I have that position, I'm going to go to the left hand side of the screen and click on shapes and select the water drop and then I can resize that to the size that I want and then I will place that next to the watering can and I can right click on that and I can duplicate it to add several different raindrops. Now once I have my design looking exactly the way I want it to, I'm going to highlight the entire image by going to the top left and dragging that over. I'm going to group everything together and I'm going to attach it because I want everything to print together. Now I can select make it at the top right corner. It's going to pull it up and I am using smart permanent vinyl so I don't need a mat. So I'm going to select mine without a mat. Make sure everything's lined up the way I want it to be. It's going to tell you exactly how much material you need on the left hand side. 
and then you're going to set your base material. In this case, I'm using the Smart Permanent Vinyl. It's going to tell you exactly which blade you need and to go ahead and load your machine. So you just hit your Load button, and the Cricut's going to do all the work for you. It's going to go ahead and cut everything out. Once it's done cutting, I have mine on this rolling machine. You can go ahead and cut that off before you unload it, or you can unload it and then cut it off. Because I'm using a white vinyl and it has a lot of details, I'm going to be using Cricut's Bright Pad so that I can easily see what all I need to weed out. So using the weeding tool, I'm gonna go ahead and remove everything that I don't want to stay on my decal. Now this is a little bit tedious because I had a lot of smaller parts. So I found that it was easier for those small, tiny parts like inside of the flower to use the tweezers to remove all of that so it doesn't stick to my project. Once I have everything weeded out, I can go ahead and add my transfer tape to the top of the decal. And then I'm gonna burnish everything down, which means you're just gonna take that flat scraper. And I like to go in all different directions to make sure it's gonna stay on my transfer tape. Then I'm gonna flip it over and peel the backing off and make sure that my design stays on the transfer tape. And if some of it doesn't wanna stay down, I can push my backing back down and scrape it from the back side to make sure it adheres to my transfer tape. So now we can head out to our rain barrel and go ahead and add our beautiful decal to it. So I'm just going to add mine right into the center, make sure everything's straight, burnish it down again to make sure it's going to stay so that I'll be able to remove the transfer tape. And you want to pull your transfer tape at an angle. And if things don't want to really stay down, just kind of push your transfer tape back up, burnish it again until all of the design stays on your project and you can remove all of your transfer tape. Then I like to go back over it, make sure everything is pushed down and nice and flat. Now, before we start on the other rain barrel, if you're enjoying today's projects and you haven't done so already, I would love for you to click that subscribe button and become a part of our community here at Country Lily DIY Decor. And if you'd like to visit me on my other social media accounts, all those links are in my description box below. For the second barrel, I wanna create a faux brick pattern. So I've headed over to Design Space. I'm going to select Shapes. I have selected the rounded cornered rectangle. I'm going to resize that to the size of a common brick, which is 8 inches by 2 inches. And then I can right click on that and duplicate it. Then using the grid pattern on my canvas, I can line everything up and have the proper spacing. Then I'm going to duplicate it again and put the next brick in the center of those two. And then as your image is getting larger, you can go to the bottom left hand of your screen and you can zoom out or make your image a little bit smaller so you can see everything on your screen. And I'm going to just continue to duplicate and line everything up just like the first two sets. Then I can group them all together and then I want to make this a stencil so I'm going to select shapes and I selected a square and I'm going to make it larger than my brick pattern. Then I'm going to right click on the brick pattern and bring it forward so I can see everything and I can size my rectangle to be larger than the pattern itself. Once I have it the size I want it, I'm going to group it and attach it together. And then I'm going to make it. And I am using the Smart Stencil, so I'm not going to be using a mat. I can make a larger stencil with that. Then I can go ahead and select the Smart Stencil, load it into my machine, and my Cricut will go ahead and cut the pattern out for me. Once it has cut the pattern out, I'm going to unload the machine and then I can weed out all of the negative space, all of the space that I don't need and leaving the stencil itself. Then I can take some transfer tape 
and apply it to the top of my stencil and burnish it down just like you're burnishing a decal. So when I got this stencil paper, I was thinking that I would be able to reuse it. But this is really like a one-time stencil. And because my barrel is so porous, it did not want to stick to it. The transfer tape didn't want to stick to it, and the stencil didn't want to stick to it. So then I pulled the transfer tape off of the stencil and tried to tape it down, and I was like, you know, I really need a stencil that I can reuse and not one that's just going to be a one-time use. So I went back to Design Space, resized my image to 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches so that I would be able to put this on a mat. I am actually going to use the stencil, the smart stencil, but I want to keep the backing on it. So it'll be a lot sturdier. I have an old mat that already has cuts and nicks in it, and it's okay if I kind of cut through the mat a little bit. So I'm going to apply that smart stencil to the mat and tape it down. And then I'm going to load this back into my machine, and I am going to select um, the material mylar, which is like a plastic, because I want to cut through the stencil as well as the backing so I can keep the backing on the stencil itself, if it makes sense, you guys, so it'll be a lot sturdier. So once I load that in there, I know that one cut is not going to cut all the way through the backing. So each time that it cuts, I'm going to check it to see how many more passes I think it needs to go. So instead of unloading it, I'm just going to check it, and then I'll press go again. It's going to go back in there and make another pass. And I ended up allowing it to do about four passes, but it actually could have done five passes because the top part of the stencil, it did cut through the backing, but at the bottom it wasn't completely cut through. So I do recommend if you do that to use five passes. So you don't want to unload it. You just want to check it, press the go button, and then when it's made all of its passes, you can unload it. So then I pulled all of the negative space out and the few pieces at the bottom that didn't cut all the way through the backing, I used a utility knife to cut those out the rest of the way. So now I have a nice sturdy stencil that I'm gonna be able to reuse around this entire barrel. So using some masking tape, I'm going to tape that down. I started in the center so I could try to keep everything lined up. And to paint my brick pattern, I am using acrylic paint in the color Burnt Umber, Nutmeg. I have some black chalk paint, which I really didn't use, and then I have some white chalk paint. So I'm going to dab a Dollar Tree pouncer sponge brush into the burnt umber and go over the brick pattern. To give it some highlights and a little bit of dimension, I'm going to take that and dab it into the nutmeg and then back into the burnt umber, and I can go back over it and kind of lighten certain areas up. And I'm going to continue to do that until I cover the entire stencil. And of course, I know it looks really dark right now, but as it dries, it'll be a really beautiful brown color. So once I have my stencil entirely covered, to speed up the process a little bit, I used my hair dryer to kind of dry it. Then using a chip brush from Dollar Tree, I dabbed that into some white chalk paint and then wiped most of it off so I could dry brush the white over top of the brick pattern. I did later on find that it was easier to just dry brush the white after you've done all of your brick patterns. So you don't necessarily have to do that while the stencil is there. Then I can remove the stencil, add it to the top, lining it up with those top two bricks, and I will continue to paint that just like I did the bottom stencil. Now, if you happen to go over like here, I was very heavy handed with the white chalk paint. Later on, I'll show you how you can kind of fix that so it doesn't have to be so distressed. But I'm going to continue to do that around the barrel, just adding the stencil and lining it up with the other bricks. Now here, to go over that white distressed chalk paint, I added a little bit more brown on top of those bricks, and it really gave it like a 3D dimensional look. So this is how it's looking. And I allowed it to completely dry for like a couple of days. 
And then I took Krylon's Color Max Clear, and I gave this three coats of the clear spray to protect that chalk paint. And then I left it in my garage for several more days, allowing it to dry, and then I added the spigot and drilled the hole in the top. And now you have a beautiful rain barrel that you could set outside anywhere. It doesn't have to be under a gutter to collect your rain. You just wanna make sure that you have room enough to add your watering cans underneath the spigot. My husband and I on our patio decided to just dry stack some cinder blocks right underneath our gutter and he added an angle on the downspout of the gutter and I could set the rain barrel directly on top of it. Now let's test it to see if it works and make sure we don't have any leaks. And we don't, there are no leaks coming from around the spigot. And you guys, as soon as I set this up, we had a terrible rainstorm that night. So we collected a lot of wonderful rainwater for my potted plants. It always amazes me how much more they grow with rainwater than just regular water from the faucet. I hope you enjoyed today's video, perhaps learned something new and found tons of inspiration. Thank you Cricut for sponsoring today's video and I do have a link in my description box below if you are interested in buying a Cricut or any of the Cricut materials. If you have a favorite out of today's two rain barrel DIYs, let me know in the comment section down below. I always love to know which one is your favorite. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Please take care and I will see you next time.